right, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and this week on El Ham Radio, we're going to be moving this GMRS repeater up to our main site, get it up on a bigger tower, and provide services for the local community. That's what's coming up next. Welcome back, everybody. This is KY4BDP Brian. And as you saw in the introduction, we are going to deploy the GMRS repeater. Now, in part one, we talked about the frequencies. We talked about how you can use a repeater with GMRS, and you can even communicate at 50 watts up on those repeater frequencies. Um, our particular repeater is going to be on 462.700 for transmit and 467.700 for receive. So go back and look at part one. I'll try to put a card up there in the top right corner so that you, if you haven't seen that first video, go look at that where we talk about the logistics planning and fabrication to get things ready. But uh, let's take part two. Let's head up to the primary repeater location and let's install this particular repeater repeater. Now keep in mind there's a couple of ways you could have gone about this particular project. You can purchase a repeater like we have here, the Bridgecom. AC4DM has had already purchased that repeater and was using it on his farm, but we decided why not get it up at the main repeater site where we have an antenna way up in the air and let's get better coverage for that same repeater and possibly allow some of our other club members to take advantage of it. Part three, we'll do some testing and show you what that additional reach means for GMRS. Uh, especially when you're in hilly country, mountainous country, potentially. So what we're doing here inside the shack is uh, moving a little bit of equipment around on the rack. We have a speaker panel that needs to be moved down so that we can make room on this particular rack for the GMRS repeater. Uh, we have two other racks to the left and to the right that you're not seeing at this particular point. This seems to be the best location for the installation. So we're just finalizing moving that panel down and uh, getting it out of the way. And that will free up some space in the top portion of the rack. Now, if you remember in part one, we were talking about building those cables, and we'll see those cables here in just a few minutes. Um, we had to build cables that had a, a PL259 on one end for the duplexer and a N connector on the other end for the repeater itself. A lot of repeaters use N connectors, but uh, a lot of times going into your antennas, your duplexers in this case and so forth, may be PL259. So we're just finishing up that uh, speaker panel and we're going to start installing the repeater here in just a couple of moments. Really nice looking repeater, simple. If you've ever opened one of these up, you'll notice that it's basically taking two mobile radios. One will be for transmit and one will be for receive. In fact, we are going to be building another GMRS repeater utilizing off-the-shelf parts. This one uh, AC4DM just had laying around in his uh, shop in use, um, and we decided to repurpose it. But you could have built a similar um, uh, repeater from off-the-shelf components, and we're going to have a different series showing that off-the-shelf build a little bit later. Bridgecom makes some pretty nice repeaters. Um, uh, uh, you'll need to check online for the cost and so forth for a UHF-based repeater. Um, and if your club has the uh, the funds for that, that may be a good way to go because you may not actually have some of the skill sets for building a repeater. So buying a repeater and just programming it for what you need might be the best way to go. In other cases, if you have the skill sets or the people or Elmers in your club that know how to build repeaters, in our case, we're very fortunate because we have AC4DM and some others. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll show you that a little bit later. Let's attach those cables now to the back of the repeater. And in this particular case, we're taking one of our jumper cables that will go to the duplexer. Now, this is the N connector um, end of this cable that we're connecting to the repeater. And uh, the other end has the PL259, which is going to go to the duplexer. And uh, we'll show you that duplexer here in just a few moments. So we're just tightening up that connector on the back of the repeater. And we also have the power elements and leads ready to go as well. We already have a power distribution element on the back of that rack. 
So let's start connecting the PL259 to the duplexer, which is utilizing an SO239 and uh, getting that all connected. If you'll remember from part one, this duplexer is for VHF and UHF. And because we're going to be using the same antenna for two meters, the left-hand connector, and uh, essentially GMRS 70 centimeters or UHF on the right hand side uh, it allow us to use a dual band antenna for both repeaters at the same time since they're on different frequencies very very handy little device and it uh, cuts down on the number of antennas you have to put up on your tower there's a little bit of signal loss because of the insertion of the duplexer but typically for our purposes for two meters and for the GMRS that we're talking about here the signal loss will be negligible since it'll be so high up uh, on our tower Alrighty, so now we've got the two jumper cables connected, one going to each repeater. Now's the time to check the SWR. Now we haven't checked the SWR for UHF on this dual band Comet GP3 antenna. So we thought, well, let's break out the uh, MFJ SWR analyzer and let's see what the SWR is looking like up around 460 to 700. Uh, normally, if you were just doing 70 centimeters, you'd be down around, uh, uh, you'd be in a slightly lower part of the band there, uh, and it would probably, uh, SWR probably be a little bit lower, like 1.4, 1.3, somewhere in that ballpark on these dual band antennas. We're going to be a little bit higher up uh, on the UHF, so we were curious to see where the SWR actually landed, and that's why we're hooking up the antenna to the, SW, to the uh, SWR analyzer, uh, the one here from MFJ. And all it uh, requires us to do is to start to dial that in. So we're moving up to around the 462 area. And uh, yeah, we're up around 1.7, 1.8 once we get it closer to 162, 700. And I think it finally settled in once we got to 462, 700 at about 1.9. Now 1.9 is not the end of the world. It's not as good as we would like it to be. Um, so we may tweak this a little bit uh, either through a tuner or something like it, either inline or otherwise, uh, to bring it a little bit closer to 1 instead of 1.9. But again, for, for our purposes and for as much as it's probably going to get used, 1.9 is not going to hurt anything. Uh, typically, if you can keep it under 2, lower would be better. And uh, we'll see if we can't uh, work on that a little bit later. But that's about where it settled in at, is about 1.9. So it's not dangerous by any stretch of the imagination. So now we have an idea of what the SWR is going to be up on uh, the reflected uh, uh, energy coming back towards the repeater, which is not going to be dangerous to the repeater. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and finalize connecting the antenna to the top side of the duplexer, and then we'll need to run a test to make sure that the, the uh, inline duplexer, the antenna, and the repeater are all working together symbiotically, uh, and therefore our HTs will be able to unlock the repeater and we'll begin to use its functionality. In part three, we're going to run those tests, and we have critters in the shack. Sometimes Sometimes that does happen <laughs> in these remote locations. Let's listen in here and see how it worked out. Alrighty, and we've got lights, and we had transmit as well. The um, HT is uh, programmed to open up the repeater with a tone of 118.8, and it did in fact open up the repeater just fine, and subsequent tests back down at the farm uh, showed us that we were able to hit it just fine. Again, we'll do further testing a little bit later, uh, showing point-to-point -point communication with GM GMRS handheld HTs and then implementing a repeater to get even further afield with GMRS frequencies. Remember folks, the great thing about GMRS and the reason you might want to go to this trouble is your family members don't have to get licensed with a GMRS. As long as one person in the family has the license and is present, they're able to utilize the same HTs without getting a license. And remember, the cost of the license has come down to $35, half of what it used to be. So there's really no excuse not to get a GMRS license so that you can use it in situations where a ham radio license may not really be that helpful, especially with family members uh, uh, and so forth. So we'll run those tests in part three. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, El Cara Ham Radio. We appreciate you coming along for the ride. Stay tuned in 73.